Hi guys, I'm Tyler and you're watching the CJS Space Channel. Today I'm going to talk you through how I would go about choosing your next base if I were you. So in this video I'm going to go through the key aspects that I look for when choosing a bass guitar. Um, there are lots of videos out there talking about your first bass and, and choosing your very first bass and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and in this video I want to actually look at the next step. So principally for players that have an instrument, you've been learning for a while um, and you want to step up and get another instrument, this video is really for you. Whilst that's the primary focus, there's definitely going to be advice in here for people who are looking at you know, your very first bass and all that kind of thing, um, but I think primarily what I'm going to talk about is that next step from having a bass to adding another bass to your collection. So I'm going to break this video down into um, just a couple of sections. I'm going to talk about all the aspects that I look for when trying to find a new bass um, and the reasons that I would have for buying a new bass guitar. Um, and then I'm going to talk you through my bases and kind of give you examples of what I've spoken about. So let's start getting into that and I'll talk about the key aspects that you need to look for when you're choosing your next bass. For me the biggest differentiator when choosing a new bass should be the sound. So that's my first tip, find something that sounds different to what you already have. There are a number of ways to go about this um, and there's also a counter argument for it. There's the argument that you want to sound a certain way, um, but I find if you want to sound a certain way, stick to the one instrument and really just learn that and do that. For what I do, I play lots of different styles of music, I record lots of different music for different people, I do lots of sessions, and actually having an instrument that is quite wildly different to the next instrument in my collection makes my decision making easier when I get to go on a gig because I know that that type of sound will straight away suit the type of gig I'm doing um, or I know that maybe I need a bass that's actually not got such a distinct sound it's more versatile and I can make it sound like a lot of different things um, but that makes my decision making easier when it comes to grabbing a bass to leave the house with or grabbing two basses so that I have one flavour for if I know that um, a session say has one style of sound um, but then there's also a potential that the artist could want a slightly different take on that I know that I can take two different instruments that have different sounds that aren't really going to cross over, um, but means that I can really deliver what I need to for an artist or a, a show or whatever that happens to be. So let's look at the ways that you know you're going to get a different sounding instrument. Um, the first one is a really obvious visual cue and that is the choice of pickups. With something like Fender's Range, um, this is my precision bass and then I have this Sadowski Jazz bass but based on a Fender. Um, you can clearly see from the two pickup setups that are on these bases that they're probably going to produce different sounds. The Precision has the split coil pickup right here in the centre of the body um, and the Jazz Bass has the two single coil style pickups that are split across the body. You can tell from that that they're different designs and a different pickup design is generally going to have a vastly different sound to another style of pickup um, and pickups are really one of the most essential parts of your sound. The next thing to look at would be the wood choice. Now that's not a visual cue obviously, but it can be in places. So on this um, custom shop precision base, I have a rosewood fingerboard um, and a maple neck. Um, whereas on the Sadowski, I have um, this Murado fingerboard, a Powell Ferro style fingerboard, um, and then also a maple neck. But the fingerboard is one place that you're going to be able to tell that there's a different difference in woods. Um, when it comes to body wood, if you've got painted finishes like these bases, you can't necessarily tell that. Um, but both of these bases have alder bodies. Um, so there's a certain low mid character to the bases um, that I believe is, comes from woods. There's lots of people that argue different things about woods and how important they are. But for me, at the end of the day, it's a, an instrument that acoustically generates sound so the wood has got to play an important part. For me I think fretboard wood is actually a really important place um, I know Roger Sadowski is of the same thought process with that um, but I find that that's one of the most defining features um, but you can have a war about that in the comments below let me know what you think about that. I'm sure there'll be a lot of differing opinions on that because I've seen so many um, but yeah that's just my view on it and, and what I've experienced. Another big factor to the sound of your 
instrument um, is going to be the scale length. So at the minute actually all of my instruments are long scale um, but if you take something like a Fender bass you're going to get a 34 inch scale from the bridge to the nut. Um, but looking at something like um, an old Gibson EB2, semi hollow body or something like that um, they have a 30 inch scale which is considered short scale, Fender Mustangs also have those, you can check them out on my channel, lots of videos of that um, in comparison between the Precision and the Mustang, um, all available so you can check those out on my channel. For something like the Mustang the pickups are Precision pickups um, but a different scale length and I think just from the comparison videos I've done of those you can tell that the scale length has a different effect on sound. Um, for me, you're going to get a lot more lows, a little bit less mid-range and a bit more top end um, with a short scale bass. The last thing that you can do to differentiate the sound of your instruments is to choose a different type of string. Um, I think this is probably the biggest factor when it comes to making a bass sound different um, and it's something worth considering. Say you really like a precision bass um, and you love everything about it, the ergonomics, how it feels how it plays, the tone, but you want to own another one. Um, whilst I advise against constantly having loads of instruments that are effectively the same, same design, same sound, um, if you want to have a more broad range of tones, one of the best things you could do is to change one to a different set of strings. So have one precision bass, if you, let's take that precision bass example, you've got two precision basses, similar woods, similar designs, same pickup. If you take one and place, you know, nickel strings, steel strings on that one, and then take the second one and put flat wound strings on that one, you're going to get vastly different tones based on the fact that the string construction is different. Um, and I'd say that if you are going to have a range of instruments that are similar in design, change the strings, have a wide variety, have one with half wounds, one with tape wound strings, one with flat wound strings one nickel, one steel, whatever it might be, because that's going to give you a really obviously discernible difference between them um, and probably makes your decision making easier when you're going out to a gig or whatever you want to do with it. Um, I think having a different set of strings is a really important factor. So that was tip number one, make sure your bass sounds different to the bass that you currently own. My second tip would be make sure it's a bass that makes you play differently. Now that sounds like maybe a strange thing to say, but I found that these two factors both interlink. The sound of the instrument will dictate the way in which you play. Um, I'll give you an example. Recently I went over to Langley Guitar Centre and tried out a Rickenbacker 4003 um, and the way I played that Rickenbacker it made me want to play more riff based things. Whereas if I pick up my P bass with flat ones I want to really sit on a, a fat groove and just kind of hold it down. Um, if I play something like my MTD I quite often want to play more melodically and more up the neck because the way that instrument sounds um, it's, it's quite bright, it's very clear. Those factors contribute to me wanting to play more melodic lines and phrases and, and in a, a higher register. Um, and I think those are great things about owning different instruments. If you own a different instrument it makes you play in a slightly different way. And once you become accustomed to the way in which you play on a certain instrument, you can then start tailoring your instrument choice to the way you want to play for, say, an artist or a session. Um, and combined with the sound, it allows you to really bring what you think is right for that situation. The third aspect for me when considering a new bass is simply to love how it looks. Um, I've had instruments that I've not loved in the past, um, I might have liked how they played generally but not really loved the looks of them um, or the other way around loved the looks of them and, and not the way it played but I think having an instrument that you love the look of and makes you want to pick it up is really important. With my Sadowski PJ5 I waited literally years to find the right colour combination um, because I wanted it to be a bass that was the right bass for me, the, the one that I'd kind of dreamed of and, and thought about for a long time. Whilst I could have picked up another PJ5 Sadowski in a different colourway or whatever, um, it's, it's part of me and music is still an art and 
being able to really deliver aesthetically as well as sonically is, is important to me about whether I love an instrument or not. Um, if I love the looks of it, I'm going to play it more and that can only be a good thing. So those are my key three tips when choosing your next bass. Let me know what you think of those in the comments below. Um, and now at this point, I'm going to go through my range of basses and let you know why I chose each one of them, the different things about them and how I make them sound different from each other um, and all those differentiating factors that I've already spoken about. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to smash the like button and hit the subscribe button. I do lots of videos like this, lots of tone demos and reviews as well. So if you like this content, there's more where it came from. Um, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and keep up to date with what I'm doing. I'm really looking to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Um, so if you can help contribute to that, that would be amazing. Um, it's really great to see the channel constantly growing. So yeah, any help you can give me with that would be much appreciated and become part of the channel family. So I'm going to talk you through all six of my bases and I'm going to go from the most important to me, the ones that I use the most, to the ones that are slightly less regularly used, but the reasons that I have them and their purpose in my collection. I think I've pretty much got it spot on with the six that I have. Um, I can't think of really any sounds that I don't have available. There might be one that I'll potentially talk about later. Generally, I think I've got it all covered um, and can manipulate things to get the right sounds for any session if it's not quite there. But I think I can get most of the way there. So here's my number one. This is my Sadowski PJ5. Um, the reason that I chose this bass is because I'm a massive fan of the Sadowski preamp. I'm a big fan of the precision bass sound. Um, but I also like the little bit more definition you get by having a jazz bass pickup in the back here. This is actually the most recent bass that I've added to my collection, but it's the one that I had wanted for probably the longest time. Um, it's probably been over, it's been more than five years that I knew that I'd like, probably like one of these basses. Um, because I've had a Stasky UV70 for a long time and that was really, really close, but not quite the perfect sound that I wanted. Um, and I love being able to turn from the precision, ba precision bass pickup in certain situations and run off the tone um, to the rear jazz pickup and get that more jazzy, um, punchy sound. I find that a PJ is the most versatile for me. It has my favoured bodywood combinations, which is was or more favoured wood combinations. It's got an alder body um, with a maple neck and then um, a Murado fingerboard. It's a 34 inch scale, so a traditional long scale, which means it's gonna sound fairly traditional to most people. Um, and it has a tone control, which I really find a crucial feature. And um, I'm not actually a massive fan of basses that don't have a tone control because I feel like it's the simplest and most organic way to get a wider range of sounds. It has um, a two band EQ, just like all Sadowski basses. Um, with a bass knob at 40 hertz and a treble knob at 4k, um, but that Sadowski preamp is my favourite preamp without a doubt. Um, and then it's just got a pan knob, so from the from between the pickups, I like to run this bass set in the middle and then pull it back, just so it's on slightly more precision bass pickup than jazz bass pickup. Um, with that setting, this is how it sounds. Um, I'll do a little bit of bass boost, which is how I like it, and a little bit of a treble boost as well. This bass is strung with Dunlop nickel super bright strings. I always keep this bass strung with nickel strings because I find them the most versatile. They're still pretty warm, but they can be bright if you need them to be. Um, and if you roll off the tone, you can get quite a flat roundy type sound. So if I need one bass for a wide variety of sounds, this is the bass that I go to. I will say that the strings on this bass at the minute are a little bit more dead than usual, and I will be changing them pretty soon afterwards. But this is how it sounds. So here's my second bass. This is my Custom Shop 59 Fender Precision Bass. This gets pretty much the lion's share of the other work that I do, particularly recording. I normally take the Sadowski PJ5 with me and then this Precision Bass. Again, you can see similarities and you can see my tastes coming through. It's got a Precision Bass pickup. Um, it's got an older body a maple neck, but it's got a rosewood fingerboard this time, so it's going to be sounding a little bit darker. 
and then that's combined with um, these flat round strings. So these are Daddario Chrome. I think they're the heaviest gauge. I think they have something like a 115 on the bottom um, flat round string. So that is really the biggest differentiating factor. This is my Motown style sound, my old school, really smooth type of sounds. Um, and again, I'm going to play this slightly differently because it naturally makes me want to play in a slightly more percussive way. There's not such a sustain. Um, it's a little bit more punchy in the attack, more kick drum like almost. But this is my second bass, really. <laughs> So at this point it starts to become a little more indistinct as to the order of priority. But I think this is probably my third choice of bass. It's probably the bass that I've gigged the third most out of them, out of my basses in recent times. And this is my MTD AG5 USA build. Obviously aesthetically this is different to the Fender style basses that I've just showed you. Um, and then, but this has features that are still Reminiscent, there are things that I really like and have really carried through my collection, but things that differ slightly. This bass has, again, an order body, keeping that simple, that Fender style sound, um, and a maple neck. On the top of the body, we have a maple cap. This is spalted maple, uh, and then a purple heart fingerboard. I absolutely love purple heart, and some of the best basses I've ever heard have purple heart as their fingerboards. In terms of electronics, we have two MTD pickups here, Bartoli. MTDs, which are supposedly precision based pickups within that design. So, again, there's that precision based pickup theme coming through, but it's the electronics that differ slightly. It doesn't have a tone control, which does upset me a little bit, um, but it's got a bass, mid, treble, active EQ, um, a pan knob here at the back, and then this switch here changes the mid range frequencies. So, 200 hertz at the bottom, 400 hertz in the middle position, 1k. Uh, at the top position and it's that 1k position that really is what I where I like to keep it because I quite often like to dial out 1k in general I generally like to suck my high mids out just a tiny bit and um, I'm into a more of a smoother sound one thing I will say about this bass is that the neck profile is asymmetrical um, and it really thins up across this half of the neck so it's thicker on the top half where the B string is and thins out up towards the D and the G strings. And that, again, makes me play slightly differently because of the way it feels. Another thing to note is that this bass has a 35 inch scale. So it's even slightly longer than a traditional Fender long scale. I will typically use this bass for function work, um, pop work, gospel style playing, um, funk stuff, jazz stuff, um, smooth jazz, those kind of genres where the other two basses really kind of end their tonal spectrum within the more traditional music. And this is for more of those modern styles and, and more expressive styles as well. Things where the instrument can really take the front of the stage rather than necessarily being just at the back supporting. Obviously this bass does that well, but there's a certain tonal quality to it. It's got a lot of treble content, which is typical of an MTD. It's got some really nice crisp high end, which helps cut through in various situations. Um, and then again, to keep this bass different to the other bass I've shown you so far, I normally string this bass with stainless steel round wound strings. I actually ran out of stainless steel round wounds last time I went to restring this, so put nickel um, round wounds on it, super brights, um, but they're fresher than the ones that were on the Sadowski, so you're going to get an idea of that brighter sound anyway. <laughs> This is my Warwick Starbase 
2 um, it's a custom shop model here we have a babinga body um, a mahogany neck and then an ebony fingerboard so different wood choices there to the other bases I've mentioned so far. The pickups are Warwick's own MEC design. Um, both of them are passive. Um, and then that's tied to a passive tone control section. So you have the EQ tone knobs for both of the pickups and then volume for each of those pickups. And then a switch to just go between them. Front is on the front pickup, middle is on, both pickups are on. And then the back is just this rear pickup here. It's got a 34 inch scale, so it's another long scale base with a fender length. Um, and I've equipped this with flat wound um, Labella low tension ultra flexible flats, which I think made me play it in a certain way. And I really, really enjoy the tone of it. Um, I much prefer it to when I had it set up with super bright strings. I feel like this bass was just a bit too um, harmonically complex with those strings. So really consider, you know, before you necessarily get rid of a bass is actually the string choice. Obviously this is another bass with flat mount strings, so similar territory to my precision bass, but I would use this more for, um, jazzers seem to love it if you're in a, a, a more traditional um, jazz setting, not the modern fusion stuff, but you know, restaurants, cafes, that type of thing, and you can't take an upright bass, which is my preference. Um, those kind of people seem to absolutely love the tone of this bass, Singer-songwriters, um, country stuff, melodic playing, um, it sounds great on this bass. And unlike the Precision, you get a little bit of choice. You can add in that back pickup for a little bit more clarity or a little bit more bite. Um, use the front on its own, roll the tone off and get those EB2 um, half nary type sounds. Uh, I think it's actually a really versatile bass despite the fact it's only got a passive EQ section. Um, and again, I think you can get a long way with just a tone control and a volume knob. I think there's a certain complexity to the sound that you can only get from a semi-hollow body bass. Um, so those genres that I've mentioned, uh, as well as anything really old school that was originally done with semi-hollow body basses, um, I would use this bass for. So I'll just give you a, a little demo of the bass. Um, just front pickup with tone rolled off. Now on to bass number five, which is my Sadowski UV70. This bass was my number one for quite a long time until the PJ5 came along. Um, but I am really, I do prefer to have a fifth string. Um, but this bass still has a place in what I do. Um, and I've recorded a lot of great parts using this bass. And there is something about recording this bass that does fit really well, depending on the artist and how they want the interaction between the kick drum and the bass part. We're back to familiar territory for me with the Fender style basses. So older body, maple neck, and then another Murado Palferro style fingerboard. Um, the pickups are obviously um, jazz bass pickups, but there is a slight difference um, in the position of this jazz bass pickup here. Um, being it's a UV70, the pickup position for the rear pickup is in the 70s fender position, which is slightly further back to the bridge, which gives it a little bit more bite and clarity. And then the same Sadowski preamp as we had on the five string. Bass, treble stacks, tone knob, um, a pan knob from rear to the front, and then the volume knob. The scale length is again 34 inch scale, so that long scale is gonna have that certain fender quality to the sound. And the strings are a lighter set of Dunlop um, nickel super bright strings. So I believe these are 100 to 40 rather than the 45 to 105s that I had on the, the other basses with Dunlop strings. Again, as I say, I've used this bass with um, a wide range of artists. I mean, with the jazz bass, you really can't go wrong. And there's plenty of versatility in there. If you flick it to the back pickup, you can do the Jacko style thing or on the front pickup kind of a P bass but with a little less um, with a little less mid-range honk it kind of sits a bit more smoothly um, and that's a sound that I actually really like um, it's the jazz bass front pickup on its own for a smooth fat but supportive sound and again I use that the same way that I use the PJ5 just a slight nudge to the front um, to get a bit more of that front pickup warmth <laughs> This is 
last base of my collection, which is a Sambo California. This is base number six. It's a five string fretless base. Um, and it's a little bit different to my other bases deliberately. Um, it has been strung C to E, so it's effectively the top five strings from a six string set um, on this bass. I already have two five string basses with the low Bs, so I thought it would be interesting to have one that had the high C option. And particularly with fretless being a little bit more lyrical and expressive, I think it's a nice touch to be able to go up to that, that kind of range. Um, in terms of the body construction, it's got an ash body. Um, I'm not normally a fan of ash bodies, but that's why I chose this bass, because it's a, something a little bit different. Again, a maple neck um, and then an ebony fingerboard. Ebony is a harder wearing wood, and I think it's, it's ideal for a fretless bass, particularly if we're going to string it with round wire strings. EQ section, it's a uh, volume, a pan from front to rear, treble knob, and then a bass EQ. So it's a two-band EQ again, just like the Stowski, because two-band EQs are generally my preference. Um, and then this switch here uh, on the back is both of the coils of this Music Man pickup in the rear here um, engaged, so it's the whole pickup engaged. And if you switch it to the front, it's just the back coil, so it's more like a jazz bass. So that was really the reason that I chose this bass, was the pickup setup. Um, if you look at the 80s records with Pino Palladino on them, he was using a Music Man Stingray, so having that fretless sound in this bass was something that really appealed to me. And then I can also switch that back, have the front pickup and the back coil of this, and get the Jacko fretless sound, and that's that was the real driver behind me choosing this instrument. It's a proper instrument of versatility um, rather than anything else, and allows me to get all the fretless sounds that people were expecting to hear. The only other thing to mention is that it's got a 35 inch scale again, um, like the MTD, so it's slightly longer than Fender standard long scale. And this is how it sounds. <laughs> So that was the run through of my bass collection and how I went about choosing my different basses and the reasons their features make them sound like they do. I hope that's given you some ideas about what you could be considering when choosing your next bass. Let me know in the comments what you think of my collection of basses. Do you think there's a, anything missing in there? I think perhaps there could be a short scale bass. But beyond that, I feel like I've generally got everything covered. Was it obvious? from this demo that the sounds that I get from each bass are inherently different or did you think that there was generally um, a certain sense of similarity? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your next bass choice will be and let me know the features that you're looking out for on your next basses and I'll love to chat to you in the comments about all that kind of stuff. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and helpful on your quest for your next bass. Hit the like button if it has and consider subscribing too. Until the next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you around soon.